Under the Silver Lake is a 2018 American neo-noir black comedy conspiracy thriller film written and directed by David Robert Mitchell, starring Andrew Garfield and Riley Keough. Welcome to The Cult of Films. We are talking about a film that no one saw except the people sitting kind of in this room i mean virtually in this room that that you are watching right now (laughs) that is under the silver lake and before before we we get to mr mulligans and coleman welcome back to the show gentlemen that i'm gonna be dying on this hill tonight that they're gonna shit on something that i love i just want to say that under the silver lake is a fucking masterpiece uh, right out of the gate. So uh, let, let's set the table. Let's set the table for the audience. This was uh, w- when Jason and I did our uh, top 10 movies of 2019 for film hooligans. This would have been on my list, and it was, except on a technicality. It was, it was debuted at Cannes already, so it was out there in 2018. So it technically didn't meet the criteria of being on my, my uh, 2019 list. So that's why it, it wasn't there. But it's an A24 film. If you know anything about me, I love pretty much almost everything from A24 Studios. But A24 Studios didn't even like this fucking film. So why am I uh, defending it? We're going to get there. First off, let's get to our our guests and our beverages. Mulligans? Uh, I'm double bagging it because that's what's in the fridge. And it's it's long trail. It's good. I like it. So, no. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you at me. <laughs> and Mr. Yeti. Uh, in honor of Jesus and the Brides of Dracula, <laughs> I'm drinking even more Jesus from Evil Twin Brewing, <laughs> as well as uh, even more pecan pie Jesus, also from Evil Twin Brewing. <laughs> we laughed it's probably so add. good. Yeah. At least Coleman's on theme tonight. I'm just... Whatevs, I'm moving. I don't care. Oh, I am somewhat on theme. This film has a lot to do with like the Velvet Underground and stuff. So I'm drinking a couple Velvet Underpants. That's uh, some hazy IPA. <laughs> uh, it's got a nice uh, floral aroma to it. Nice creamy head. So I will say, while well, we're still friends, gentlemen, before we talk about Under the Silver Lake, <laughs> Lahayam to your health. Cheers. Mmm. If you're gonna have some Jesus, you might as well have a little bit more. So how is how is Jesus taste? Jesus tastes amazing in my mouth. That's it's like an explosion of flavor. As you would hope, uh, you know, Jesus is pecans tasting. Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> let's talk about okay. So this is gonna be a little bit less this is gonna be a little bit more messy for for the audience. And I just wanna tell everyone because to be fair, this movie is kind of a mess. So th- there's Usually we give you a whole like information bomb of the the stuff about you know the director and the the behind the scenes, but I feel like this film is so there's so much to talk about. It's so interesting on its own merits that it, let's just leave it all for that. Let's just get it out in the open like how we feel about it. Dave, David Robert Mitchell he directed one other film that was It Follows, which I loved. Did either of you see It Follows? I did not. Nah, missed okay. it. I'm okay. not a movie nerd. Sorry. It's it's a slasher film with an STD as the as the monster, you know, following people around. That that's the gist of it. Oh follows. God, did I hear about that? I might one? have to watch it now. Oh, it's good. It's <laughs> I, I love it, but not as much as this. So so let's you know I I already showed my hand. Coleman, why don't you kick it off? How how did you feel about Under the Silver Lake? Uh, I felt like it was a movie written by a guy who thinks his shit doesn't stink, uh, <laughs> and fell really far from the mark. Oh, okay. um, I think you made us watch it because you're a sociopath with <laughs> <laughs> terrible taste in movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. All right. <laughs> that stung a little, uh, Mulligans. <laughs> so this movie felt like what would happen. Somebody was trying to take. Eyes Wide Shut and 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 Zodiac, which I had recently seen just prior to this, mm-hmm. mashed them together thinking it was a masterpiece, but they got the genre equivalent of The Cabin Boy. <laughs> Why do you keep saying The Cabin Boy? 
it's because that's the title boy. of that movie. <laughs> At least in the Cabin Boy's defense, <laughs> it was intended to be a comedy yeah. and actually was making that effort. Mm -hmm. This one, uh, it hurts my brain. <laughs> Why did you do this to me, John? This isn't fair. All right. I, I, I have to rebut. Uh, I have to rebut. Be okay, this is so my jam. Speaking, speaking of butts. Speaking of butts, there's plenty of that, but more on that later. The, uh, this, okay. M little me, like tiny John me. <laughs> I'm not talking about my penis. I'm actually talking about me as a child. <laughs> Who didn't like the whole decoder ring type deal? Like this is, he is... This is a this is a guy that is the character is obsessed and that is something like uh you know Jay from Classic Fix uh, Flicks when he came on and talked about high fidelity he he said that he loves especially main characters that are obsessed be so much more interesting because they're just they're more raw and, and this guy is just like his life's shitty like he it just sucks like it it he even says it to Topher Grace during he's just like do you ever feel like you're living the wrong life or like you're living a, a version of your life that's not the best or whatever and so he has to make he's getting evicted he has to make his his life seem more interesting than it is but he happens to be fucking right like we all try to do the decoder ring and, and look at you know little conspiracy theories and shit like that but just like what happens if you were right one time that's what this movie is yeah, he's really obsessed. You know what else I like to do when I was that age? Pay rent and pay for my car. You know, if I got eviction notices, I'm usually more concerned about not getting kicked out sure. of my house yeah. than I am, you know, going down the rabbit hole. Yeah, and there were a lot of rabbit holes here. <laughs> but way too many rabbit holes. The balloon girl says she's just like she just nails it. She's just like th there's a very specific amount of time in your life, and she's probably referring to like your your early twenties or like you know whatever where you're just like young, you're free, you're not beholden to anyone else, and you just gotta fuck and you just gotta you know do crazy things. And this is his time to fuck up. It, it's it's well established in this film that his mom is is like a safety net. He's lying to her constantly about how he's working and, and he's lying to everyone about how he's working and how he's like doing all these things. And it's it's not true, but you know that if he gets evicted or, you know, loses his car, he could always he's not gonna be like a homeless bum. Right. So when you start a sentence with the balloon girl, dot 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 <laughs> automatically <laughs> Something's wrong with the sentence. Oh come on! <laughs> Get off your hipster like. You know what? It's that, it sounds like Coleman did a better job because he did take those notes. He can really actually tear this movie apart. <laughs> I'm just going off of my gut feeling. Sure. And it was just one of those things where I couldn't tell where like the irony ended and the pretentiousness began. Mm -hmm. It just it was a feeling. It would just seem like yeah, I get it. Okay, it's a puzzle movie. There's a conspiracy, or there's supposed to be. Wait, there's another conspiracy. Here's a third conspiracy. If everything's a clue, nothing's a clue. I mean, sure. honest to God, you're killing me here. I, I just, it was driving us crazy. I was watching this with my wife, and we were both, <laughs> for the entire movie, asking ourselves, how many days has it been? He's still not evicted? Are you kidding me? <laughs> the capitalists only care about when he's evicted and paying his bills. Because he's a schmuck. It's right. like it's, they're glorifying schmuckness. And I'm like... Yeah. Glorified schmuck? That, 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 no. In a, is this another step of enabling the participation trophy generation? Like, what? Well, apparently so, because he hooks up with every woman he meets in the movie, even I, though he's just trying to get to one. Says How? the man that loves How choke. How does it happen? Says the man the that loves thing. choke. This dude is just a hot mess, scruffy, ripped clothes, literally stinks like a skunk. God, I just went from six to midnight yeah. with you describing Andrew Garfield. He is he is a hot mess. <laughs> that that, yeah, that was that's just true. I mean, and I guess that I part makes sense why all the women are all over him. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Oh, there's God. there was a lot of plot devices that never really amounted to anything sure. like the skunk thing. Yeah, he smelled like a skunk. Why? Who knows? Reason. There's no real reason for it ever. It's never explained. He just. Oh, no, no, it's like explained. Shit. There's a lot of skunks in East Yeah, LA. there's a lot of skunks in where he lives. That's the, Great. That's the I just setup. I learned yeah. a fun little geographical <laughs> tidbit about Los Angeles. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the only way it really ties the plot together is it makes the not-girlfriend never come back. 
Right. For the rest <laughs> of the movie. That's the only thing it accomplishes. Yeah. <laughs> because it shows she's so empty and dead behind the eyes because she's just part of the whole Hollywood machine that yes. she just doesn't want to come back because he smells like skunk for a little bit, you know, like it's mm-hmm. not a, t- although, you know, it, it, it does drag that gag out a little bit too much in this film. I will say that, but it is, it's a gag, but okay. So let, let's start with uh, Johnny's thing where you're just like, Oh, you know, there's, there's this established and this established, but then it was a brick wall, but that's what a maze is. It's supposed to be not every single thing should be to a conclusion. Sometimes in the labyrinth, you just, find yourself in a corner so you have to back out of that corner and go find the right way because eventually spoiler alert spoilers all this whole fucking thing (laughs) is a spoilers Uh, you don't have to watch the movie right well (laughs) I, i know you haven't seen the movie but we're talking about it so spoilers just letting you know he does figure it out and he is correct so yes there are plot holes and plot you know walls and all this stuff i mean the dog killer thing uh, we'll talk about that but (laughs) <laughs> it, it's 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 not so much about like having a clean journey. It's that he gets to the cheese at the end. Did he? Yeah. Which Just was because what? the cheese sucked doesn't mean he didn't was the get cheese there. The hippie lady's tits was that the cheese? No, the cheese is fucking <laughs> oh, wrong. Really, Open that's close. It. it was his. He wasn't really interested in in the girl in white. He really was just trying to get the bird lady the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> That's the, the moral of the story. That the bird lady not... was a consolation prize. That was... <laughs> yeah. Well, but, I mean, he's such a, like, a horrible character that even if he found a way to get her out of the, the, the Harvey Weinstein tomb, it probably wouldn't have mattered anyways because he would have dated her for, like, a weekend and then he would have fucking moved on because it's just... He's that much of a piece of shit of a character. Yeah. Yeah, he 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 had the attention span of a moth. Like the <laughs> next light bulb that came along was fine. I sure, was like, oh, yeah. Oh. Cause, but it was cause, all in the journey to find the main girl that yes. I don't know he was in love with or it just or gave something. The, he, he was in love with the with the journey. It gave his stupid life purpose. The girl, might I add, that he started by stalking, <laughs> and then she acknowledged the fact right. that she knew he was stalking her, mm-hmm. and then said. Do you want to come in and have a drink and hang Maybe. out with me and spend what? some time? You want to get high? Baby. It's LA. Just whatever. Yeah. Right. If you're if you're not getting st- like no, I, I say that jokingly, but it, if you're in that little circle and you're not getting stalked, then you're not doing your job as like an aspiring actor or actress. So I totally buy that shit. Oh oh, and uh, can we just can we just r- acknowledge the obnoxiousness of Pirate Steve? <laughs> Why? You never hear him talk. No, I don't oh, care. What was, was the like, point? There's another pointless I thing. Still, yeah. Yet another pirate thing. guy. Oh, great. He's Doesn't there. Matter. I don't know why. Oh, what did they do? He followed the girls in the cabriolet, and they were all, oh, he found the numbers. Oh, oh and, the, and they're in the boat, and they're, oh, oh there's the pirate guy again. Oh, <laughs> rah, 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 rah. Give him the bag. Ah, there he goes. It why? doesn't matter. This why? is... This is a this is a modern retelling of Wizard of Oz or or uh, Alice in Wonderland, but completely original. You you take that back. Those movies deserve better. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I'm saying that it's that kind of story. It's it's a it's a person that's on a journey to through like some kind of a maze. It's, it's labyrinth. It's all these things. Although it's an original story and it does its own thing, which I completely appreciate. There's no original ideas in fucking Hollywood anymore. So the fact that this movie even got made is brilliant, but that the pirate guy, the, the, the homeless King, they're just characters <laughs> along the way. <laughs> and then just, yeah, that's it. That this, this was an ongoing Two hour movie. Yeah. Of, <laughs> what the hell? Have you seen a Hitchcock movie or a David Lynch film? It's it's like those. And Hitchcock Hitchcock's never Hitchcock. annoyed me like this. Like okay. something of I you know what I can't I can't articulate the why. I just know the what. And this movie annoyed the hell out of me. Like I can't tell you why entirely. How, I have my when did it lose you? How far I, in? It, where did it lose me? God, it's all a blur. Some of it I blocked out. I, I I don't know. When it started seeming aimless, and that's somewhere in the first half hour. Oh, what? And then at the random friends. Like, first he shows up to the crazy 
conspiracy dude with the cameras and the secret little cubby hole and all oh, the creepy sure, yeah. faces on the walls where he's like, I should get a family. Yeah. So I can what? leave him this stuff. Yeah, because you got to leave him that stuff. And they like pan past and you see the you see the little owl figurine. And he talks about the owl's kiss and yeah. he gets killed by the owl's kiss. And that's like another conspiracy of weird. Why is it there? Oh, and we talk about the whale. I yeah. hate that actor, by the way. Oh, what? His voice, <laughs> his voice is the creepiest freaking thing. And he does the stupid Jersey Mike's commercials where he says, be a sub above. And all I think is like serial killer trying to give me fucking people sandwiches. <laughs> What's wrong with that? That he's cast oh, in a weirdo that movie. Guy. He's perfectly cast. Oh wait, he, did I just he make, was perfectly that... cast? But oh, I wait, hate it. Was he the author? Because I lost track of all of that. That was the author, yes, wasn't it? He wrote the. Zines. He was the author. He in wrote the, the crazy show. book. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I guess that makes sense. Patrick S. Book... Fischler is a fucking saint. Did you find him playing the crazy, weird, creepy characters? He was. I mean, that's his, yeah. that's his niche. He's a David Lynch guy. He's in uh, Mulholland Drive. He's the one that's a part of one of the scariest, pro probably arguably the scariest scene in all of movies yeah, ever. He was in it. He's no, that because he, shit. <laughs> he's amazing. <laughs> he's in Twin Peaks and stuff. I love this guy. Uh, yeah, Patrick Fischler is, is amazing. Uh, Riley Keough, she's that's Elvis Presley's granddaughter. Okay, I'm just I don't know, just fact dropping. Right, just awesome. just throwing out some nerd cred there. <laughs> just, letting <laughs> you know, just letting you know, just flexing, you know, <laughs> as hey. I do. F flex on east la no it's a okay so there's a couple of scenes uh where it or not even a couple of scenes like the entire movie is played out like a like a parody like a sick twisted dark parody of an old-timey hollywood film you have the shot by shot marilyn monroe coming out of the pool except this movie puts its own spin on it and she starts barking like a dog of course, yep. why not that why was another you? piece of the movie that's just like all the women are barking wait they stopped barking what was what Okay, oh, what's the point? Is he gonna start? <laughs> can can I there's, tell you my? There's a dog killer. Can I tell you my theory on the dog killer? <laughs> Here's my theory on the dog killer. Which right away I love it because the the opening shot of the of the movie is it says beware of the dog killer, but dog is uh, flipped, so it says like basically it says be be beware of the <laughs> god killer. It's mm. beating you over the head with the symbolism. How is this movie not hard to, to follow? But anyways, so the dog <laughs> killer, I believe, is this secret organization because the dogs are allegories for all these like Hollywood starlets and these women that are being basically bought and purchased as uh, pharaoh mummification toys all these powerful men are talking to these broken Hollywood, you know, never was is the, these, what is it? The, the starlets or whatever the, the they work for the, the oh, porn company the shooting, star, stars, shooting stars. Yes. Yeah. So, so they, you know, they have all this money, all this like gravitas, gravitas and all that. And so they convince <laughs> them to come and get sealed up in these like tombs with them for existential purposes. You know, Oh, you know, you, you were shit. You were a, you were a never was in this, in this crazy machine during life so come with me and you could you know join a pharaoh in the afterlife you know that's what it is so i feel like the dog killer is just that system or, or even if you want to kind of hone it in a little bit the the bum king or the homeless king because he's the one that gets at the end when uh andrew garfield's sitting there he's just like why do you have dog biscuits and he gets so pissed so i'm like oh you are literally incarnate the dog killer because you know he it's not just her that barks in his dream when he like uh, finds when, when he's find like uh, following the friends at that hipster party on the roof, and then he confronts one of them, and then like she kicks him in the nuts, and then all those girls like come in and start barking at him. It's the allegory for them being the dogs, I think. So I think you found way more symbolism in this movie than I did. I will say uh, the movie felt very Lynchian, yep, up to the point that. He <laughs> rubbed James Dean's head yeah, and, and sat under underneath. Isaac Newton's tomb. <laughs> and then up came a guy, and I saw the guy, and I went, oh, shit, it's a king of the homeless. And the guy came up, and he said, I'm the king of the homeless. I'm the homeless king. <laughs> and I have a confession. This movie is fucking amazing after that. I loved it. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> 
You just wanted to fuck uh, with me for the first uh, half. Yeah, I feel I feel so half, betrayed, but I'm not shocked. <laughs> oh, look at this turn. Stalker. It must it must be a West Coast thing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just one of those boring New Englanders. Whatever. Look at now, the look at the the drama of this this particular cast with the with the oh, turn. Oh, oh, there's a plot <laughs> twist! Oh my god! At least that was more interesting than this movie. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> now so, I don't know if this movie was supposed to be serious. Yeah. All the way through, because after I'm the king of the homeless, it became a hundred percent a comedy to me. Right. And I was not reading into it. I wasn't looking for all the symbolism. The one thing I did notice, as I stated in the beginning, it seemed like it was written by a guy and made by a guy who thought his shit didn't stink. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that all of the people in the movie think that their shit doesn't stink and that I've met people like this that were actors and that really was a really good representation totally. of these kind of people. And it became hilarious after that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it toes the line. It gets right up to the edge of being a farce. And just like just doing shit for like no reason, or being weird for weird sake. But then it, it it always kind of winks at the audience right before you're just like, okay, this is a step too far. At least for me, Johnny, you didn't get this. Uh, but it's just like really, this movie went over my head. Well, it's not even over your head because it's it's whatever you want it to be. It, it I think it it can be. If you're into that into the suspense of him trying to find shit then it, it has that for people. But I, I, I like Coleman. I, I think that it, I, it's, it's just a straight-up comedy. I just thought it was a comedy from, from the opening scene. You know, I, I thought it was a complete... It, it's, it is a, a complete, like, indictment of the Hollywood machine in a comedy, in a comical way. This is the anti-Hollywood right. uh, wank film. This isn't your Majestic or your <laughs> La La Land. This is... You know, Hollywood loves to to have movies made about it and just be like, oh, thank you. You know, you, you, you're going to get like an Oscar now because you, you think the, the whole Hollywood, you know, anyone could could uh, come and, and make their dreams come true. But then this movie's like, no, everyone, th this is the fucking, you know, waiters and waitresses and the Where dreams go to die. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, I, just, I thought yeah. it was uh, again in that second act is when I really picked it up because the first half. The first half was very serious, mm -hmm. and it, it presented itself as very serious. And the, the one thing I liked in the first half of the movie, intentional or not, I don't know, is when his car got towed and he got gum on his hand. Yeah. The next morning, <laughs> he has a comic book stuck to his hand that he's trying to get off. Absolutely. And what is it? It's Spider-Man. Yep. Big oh fuck you, my. Marvel. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was excited about that. But the whole second half of the movie, and what really lets you know that it wasn't meant to be serious, even though the first half presents itself as such, mm -hmm. is when he bashes the songwriter's <laughs> head in with the guitar and the like unnecessary gore in that, that lets you know that this is comical. <laughs> right. Right and and the, I'm the king of the homeless. That <laughs> really just gave it away. When he's when he's walking with the the heiress, like the mil, the billionaire heiress, and she's just like, oh, you know, if someone could could kill a dog, you know, they they wouldn't kill, a, or if someone couldn't kill a dog, they couldn't kill a human or something. And then he almost like looks up and winks at the camera, like literally, and goes, <laughs> I don't think that's true because he just yeah. fucking murdered this old ancient like. <laughs> songwriting being with Kurt Cobain's fucking guitar right. and he finds out that everything is a farce. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Uh, no, it was I, after the second half. This movie is pretty pretty amazing. Yeah. Johnny, have we Just, convinced you yet? Come on, Johnny. I I'm not going to say your arguments are wrong. I just couldn't stand this movie. <laughs> It's a... I've just I've got no argument for you other than I watched this movie and the more I thought about it the more annoying it got. I just <laughs> I was just like all it was all the question of why and you maybe it's funny. I don't know. Oh god. There's nothing you liked <laughs> about this film? Nothing. I, we were just we were just annoyed at this character. Like <laughs> if it was going if they were going for if this is like the 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 hipster 
millennial equivalent of Nurse Ratchet, then I, okay, they got there. I just didn't, like, you're talking about it as a comedy, and I clearly missed that ball, because we were both, my wife and I both watched it, and the whole time we're like, what the hell? <laughs> What's wrong it. with if this you person? Try to take it seriously. Yeah. What do you do for a, a living? Why are you dropping twenty dollars on a drink that you can't afford? Right. You just want him to pay his rent the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Not just once, but twice, because he, he he wants to buy a drink for the girl. But no, he's too busy going. And it's just like it just seems like the the symbolism. If it was all if that was the joke, the symbolism was so all the symbolism was all so obvious. I guess I didn't like the joke. Yeah, that's <laughs> weird. I, I I'm like, sorry. I like that I'm... there was something behind literally every different set piece because it, it never it didn't stay in one spot. You were if you didn't like what was going on, you know, in in this like three minutes, then boom, you're you're across town and you're, and you're doing something else. Like the and and it it's not just played as a joke. Like certain things are an actual commentary. Like when Topher Grace is, is actively talking shit about the nanny state about how. Everyone, oh yeah, you know, everyone's watching everyone, and I'm, you know, people are probably following me all the time. As he's sending a drone yes. to go spy on Tiff, yes. is that was Topher Grace? That... Topher Grace was his bar friend. That yeah, he wanted... yeah, that, yeah. That, I, that... I did not catch that with a beard. I missed that. Wait, <laughs> no, the beard. No, that was a different friend. That's the other thing. Is that seemed like Topher Grace, the guy that he meets at these parties that he's talking to? Oh no, that's someone else. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, no, that, Liam that's like Allen or something. Yeah, no, that's, that's Jimmy. Simpson. That's Liam McPoyle from uh, "It's Always Sunny." He's all over the place. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, I just, God, this movie was so. No, now the, I want to IMDb this shit. There's no way that was <laughs> Topher Grace. Yeah, no. The, when he goes to his house and he's like, and he's and he sends the drone over to spy. Yeah, on they the spy actress. on the girl. I know yeah, you're talking Topher about. Grace. Yeah, we know the what? scene. Yeah, <laughs> take your word for it. Either way, I imagine you did your Fine. Uh, research. <laughs> I found so much enjoyment in like every bit of it. Like, for no reason, he just goes out to his car, and then he sees his his car is all like vandalized. So he doesn't like confront the little kids. No, he just fucking punches them in the face. <laughs> he beats yes, the he, shit out of middle he, schoolers. He <laughs> lurches and stalks them down the street, and then he just goes yep. and beats a minor. Every oh, time yeah. you think this, this you figured out this movie, it just goes <laughs> that extra step. Now, John, do you think that it was supposed to be a serious movie with all of this symbolism as the uh, speaking on on the state of Hollywood, or do you think it was supposed to be more comical? You're asking me. I am. I think both. Really, I think a lot of it was played as a joke, but a lot of it was just like. Yeah, isn't it funny that, you know, like, really, there's a secret society of douchebag Harvey Weinstein type, uh, you know, taking these these poor young girls and, like, sealing them up with them. Isn't it funny? But it's just like, oh, shit, it, it might. <laughs> you know, like, who, who wouldn't think that, that Kevin Spacey doesn't have an underground bunker where he has a bunch of little boys? point, yeah. Yeah. Who knows? I mean... Just if Scientology was like this, they'd all eventually go away. <laughs> it, it's a lighthearted indictment, but it's also a very harsh joke. It, it's both, <laughs> I think, and it, and it succeeds at both. And and it's a it's a whole commentary on the whole I ideology of of how we view idols, right? How we put these people on pedestals. How you know he's he's talking to the the chick that comes over, and they just like it's just like the the have sex buddy. But then she's talking, she's like, oh, that's, you know, the Playboy or whatever. He's like, yeah, that's the first thing I ever masturbated to. And then, like, later on, the heiress dies in the exact same pose in the Silver Lake. I'm just like, oh, my God. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just like, so well made. Yes, there's, like, plot holes and shit, but everything kind of comes around in this weird way. I mean, Nintendo Power scene? Okay, that, there's... <laughs> That almost With the made map me blush. That lines up from the cereal box. Yeah, that that made me even blush because I was like, "Movie, I'm with you, but you're really, you're really fucking with me right now." Right, <laughs> trying to put this stuff together. Yeah. Ah, oh, God. Oh. There's so. little moments in watching it and rewatching it that stood out to me, like fun stuff, like the not a friend, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
where she's asking what the parrot says. Oh, he's yeah. like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. And she goes, what's that? Not a friend? Not a friend? <laughs> <laughs> Just and a... she did seem like she was like sticking around to be his girlfriend until he smelled like shit. I didn't read that as a commentary so much on it was just a way to get rid of her from the rest of the story because she added no benefit to the rest of the story. <laughs> right, yeah. It was a plot device. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I mean, you're, we're probably both right. We're probably both wrong in some way. I, I like how <laughs> interpretive this film is, and that's what makes it fun. It, it's a lot to, to kick around and talk about and throw at each other and be like, hey, I think it's this, I think it's that, and... Oh no, you're wrong. Not a lot of movies do that anymore. You know, it, it sparks a conversation, which I really appreciate. I think maybe there's a reason nobody saw it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they had the initial screenings, and the critics were like, "Don't." Well, <laughs> just I, don't. I guess the the story is a twenty four. They. Uh, it debuted at Cannes Film Festival. It competed for the Palme d'Or, which is the most prestigious award there is. And it was panned like nobody's business at the at uh, Cannes Film Festival. So A24 didn't even release it theatrically. They dumped it on Amazon Prime for free in the wrong aspect ratio. That's why it looks all squished. They didn't even bother to get the aspect ratio right. That's how much they fucking hated this film. <laughs> so basically we're gonna we're gonna have this conversation no one's gonna watch this review because nobody cared about the film that's right so now tell me what you really feel your political views johnny because no one's gonna watch <laughs> my political views <laughs> I, I don't think certain conspiracy theories out there need this level of inspiration i'm sorry <laughs> motivate someone and that's just scary Aww. It'll motivate me to get a decoder ring, buy some <laughs> buy some cereal. At least decoder ring has a plan. <laughs> <laughs> he succeeds. He has a plan. Yeah, he figured it all out. Weirdly, sure. In a strange sure manner, he did. Yeah, a bunch of shit that didn't she, make sense by sheer dumb luck about hey. something that didn't matter, and he got the girl at the end. Sometimes sort you need of. your pro protagonist sort of. to be so much of a, a lazy fuck up that only someone with this much time on their hands could figure something out. Figure yeah, you see out. that that was my problem. I couldn't get past the lazy fuck up. Like I just kept all I saw was you schmuck. Yeah. You why what are you doing with your life? I, I'm an I'm the old curmudgeon. I'm the guy yelling at people to get off their lawn. That's why this that's I get it now. That's why this movie didn't work for me. I'm a grown up. <laughs> <laughs> Coleman and I are not. horrible children. My apologies to all the whippersnappers out there. Sure. You can have this movie. Take it. It's fine. I will. I will. <laughs> I am a, a degenerate, and I love this movie. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I will watch this movie again for the and, comedic. And now, background. now I should. But, who would you like? Uh, obviously, Johnny wouldn't recommend this to anyone, even an enemy. But <laughs> Coleman, who would you recommend under the Silver Lake to? Sociopaths, people with mental issues, yes. um, mm. <laughs> people like you, <laughs> Fan, fans of tinfoil fashion. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Fans, fans of tinfoil hats and and yep. swords yep. and uh, pirates. Pirates. I think this would be good for. Uh, uh, yeah, well fair pirates. play. Homeless. Pirates, the definitely. homeless. Yeah. yeah, homeless kings. Yeah, <laughs> homeless kings. Those are separate. Homeless kings and homeless kings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Sam is not very nice to like the regular homeless. He only he only respects the king of the homeless. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, that's obviously him lashing out his own shortcomings of he's about to be homeless. But maybe he's not. Maybe he's one right. of those. He's just going to go home. See, and... you got it. You got the movie. Look at yeah. Johnny go. Just because I get the movie doesn't mean I have to like the movie. I get the movie. Aww. It's obvious. Some of the little <laughs> symbols are just, hey, look, here's a symbol. Here's another symbol. And then you're spent like there's so many symbols. Is, there, is that a symbol? Is that a symbol? Oh, uh, I don't care anymore. That's okay. It's, it's a. It's not. It's not for everyone. I. I already think you're a weird creep for not liking Cabin Boy. So, <laughs> listen. I'd watch, I watch. I would rewatch 
Cabin Boy before this movie. Wow, wow. I would re-watch Samurai Cop before I watch this movie. <laughs> Samurai Cop. Well, yeah, Samurai Cop. Actually, I still have to finish Samurai Cop because that also is a two-hour hot mess. Samurai but... Cop is a fucking masterpiece. That's why. <laughs> so it's just it a sounds like it's it. just a train wreck. It's just and I still would watch that train wreck over this one. All right. I think it's a great movie for anybody that's nobody. No. <laughs> <laughs> God, just turn your mic off after that. How do you follow that up? <laughs> I just I can... Coleman, you win. You win. You win. <laughs> you the both podcast. win. I you know what? I concede this this whole show right. to both of you. You win. <laughs> we did Smartly it. Smartly done. We did yeah, it, Coleman. We win. Hooray. Woo! What did we I win? Don't, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I would recommend this for anyone that I don't know. This is like I said, it's it's our generation's Wizard of Oz for weirdos. It's it's if you like David Lynch, if you like uh, Alfred Hitchcock, and you like just like it's just so funny. Uh, like I don't know, it, it tickled me to no end. I love this movie. Uh, it's the it's the best movie that I can't recommend to anyone because everyone will shit on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was I was laughing out loud hard to myself a lot of the second half of the movie. Nice. <laughs> But it's because the first half I was prepared for that David Lynch, mm -hmm. just dissatisfied. Okay, where's the plot going? There's no purpose behind this. I was waiting for that. And then just all of the the winks at the audience and the ridiculousness of it. You know, I, I was literally laughing out loud in my living room watching this movie. Uh, yeah. And, and I bet, like, because I've seen <sighs> this movie three times now, and I can fairly say honestly say that every single time gets better because the more there's just so much shit like thrown in your face and the more that you see it like the jokes make more sense the every single time you watch it so i i, I could say that you know i i think for you coleman like watching it again you'd probably like it more watching it with the the lens of it just being a, a complete comedy from start to finish well, the first time I only watched the first half. So when I went into it the second time, I'm just going, ah, damn it, I'm going back into this piece of shit. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> well, you doubled down on the sh on the shitty vibes. Yeah, you but, didn't I, know. but I got there and it yeah. was worth it. So now you have to watch the Paid second off. half a second time without watching the first half. I started to before we did the podcast. Oh. Huh. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you what my favorite scene is? My favorite, What's that? my favorite Please. scene. It has a little setup, and it's got where he sees his when he follows the random coyote, and the coyote <laughs> randomly takes him to the, another hipster Hollywood party with his ex girlfriend. Now you know, definitely you know, marrying up. And then at the end, when he when he makes it out alive, he escapes the homeless king. He looks up, and then they're they're uh, painting over her billboard and half of her face is Ronald McDonald. And it's just like <laughs> yeah. true love is a cheeseburger. Cause it splices both of them together. <laughs> it's, I don't yep. know why it, I just love that so much. Did they ever explain the ex-girlfriend at the beginning? Like I no. remember him look, I remember him looking at the billboard and seeing her on the contact billboard. No. But there was like zero explanation beyond. There was, n there was none. <laughs> and the only even my wife was like, "What? Who is that? Yeah. I think that's his ex." There's a throwaway like, line in there, and I'm only saying this because I've seen this three times. There's a throwaway line, kind of in the beginning when he, when he's talking to Sarah about the dog. He's like, "Yeah, my dog died. It, it used to be like our thing or something with the with the ex girlfriend." So they establish it, but it's really quick. It's like a blink and you right. miss it. And I mean. Again, jumping into this a little bit more, like thinking about it a little bit more, it could even sum up as just not not like it's all in his head or it's all a dream type thing because it, it's not that like uh, vivid you know, you or know. whatever. It it's more like okay, it this is the story about a guy that just went through a breakup and now he this is the story of him him like trying to have a rebound and then getting over his ex at the end where he sees her half as a clown face. I I, I don't know. There's just so much here that you could be like, okay, this movie is this. This movie is that, this. It's like eight the, different movies. That, that's the one thing I pulled out of it at the end as far as symbolism goes. I'm like, is this whole journey just 
him getting over his ex girlfriend. Yeah. Poorly like, was established this all a fever dream that he had, but it was really just getting over his ex <laughs> that they barely explained. Yeah, I think so. I, it is could be. that is that that's the that's how far you have to. I did talk, speaking of coyotes. <laughs> I think we found my favorite part of the movie where he's talk where the homeless king is talking about mm. how the coyote you have to follow because it's a sacred beast and the coyote is eating out of the trash and runs off with a giant piece right. of garbage and like there goes your sacred beast yeah Yay. If, if nothing else and and johnny i'll say this if you ever do try to give it a chance enjoy the singular moments rather than trying to tie it all together <laughs> And that's when I found it really funny because it wasn't funny because the moments tied together. It was funny because some of these moments were just so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like, like the a coyote and yeah. the homeless king. And, <laughs> and he ate the whole cookie. Oh, yeah. Which obviously we knew where that was going. I didn't. He <laughs> ate the whole cookie. I'm like, that guy is gonna trip balls. Yeah, and it's so <laughs> funny. See, I didn't, un I didn't make that connection right away until he started tripping balls. And they talked about the cookie. And I was like, ah, yeah. it was drug. Now and, I get it. Because the yeah. girl the knows it's said, so you shitty. Have to take a bite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's it's such a shitty party and so boring that she is just like, no, you all have to take a bite of hallucinogens. So you could like the next day be like, oh, what a crazy party! Like, she has to, it, that's just like the Hollywood thing. It has to be and the veneer has to be more important than it actually is. And I'm like, yeah, so was, was that girl? Was that party with the one the like the solo show? Was that a was it a club or or a mausoleum or both? Does it matter, Johnny? I don't. No, these are details that got stuck in my head, and I'm like, why is this here? Is this a crypt? No, wait, it's a club. It's both. In the okay. daytime, it's probably okay. a crypt, and at night, it's Hollywood, so you have it's cool to watch movies in the graveyards and a party, you know, with the dead celebrity. I mean, that's just Hollywood. Johnny. So, so Hollywood's a bunch of gobots. So ambushed with this movie, just... you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. I thought I was uh, gonna be the one getting, you know, the 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 DP here, but no, it's John. No, there's, no, there's no. The reason that I did it that way. No. You, <laughs> you did. Because I genuinely, I genuinely was disgusted the first half of the movie, and then and I <laughs> understood that it was amazing. <laughs> I I will strongly consider rewatching this. <gasps> we did it, Coleman. Our gentleman, yes. my gentleman, uh, bet. Today I told Coleman I said I'm I'm gonna because I thought I was gonna be alone and I'm like I'm gonna <laughs> convince Johnny to at least watch this again. I will think about it strongly after but, I've unpacked all of the boxes from the move. Yeah, but we will call it a tie because I'm pretty sure you thought I was just gonna shit on this thing the whole way through. That's fair. I will share this victory with you, <sighs> ladies and gentlemen. Under the Silver Lake, no one fucking saw this movie. Please go watch it. It is free on Prime. You have no excuse not to. Check this and, thing out. And only because it's free. <laughs> Don't pay for this movie. That's a fair point. Go on. I, I would say smoke some pot, do some drugs, <laughs> drink a few beers. That's got to be it. Yeah. That's what I was, I was missing. Especially go do some mushrooms or some acid, watch this movie, and you will... <laughs> Love it. Yes. Yes. We'll be writing secrets and codes on the bottom of your coffee table. Oh, That's right. That could be you. I do that already. Morning. Yeah. Well, it's over. <laughs> Coleman Yeti, since you technically won the episode, where can everyone find you? Get the first plug. <laughs> uh, you can find me at Coleman Yeti on Instagram and Twitter. Check me out on my buddy's channel, Two Bananas Adventures and Gear on YouTube. I was uh, just part of a three-part series where I almost died, so that's exciting. Uh, and find me right here uh, every once in a while on the Cult of Films. Woo! Uh, Johnny, uh, it was... I'm sorry you felt ambushed, but this was an eye-opening experience for all of us. Where can everyone find you? Uh, you, could, you could find me here. Please don't find me. <laughs> <laughs> There's no Dakota rings. Just don't find me. It's fine. <laughs> I'm fine. You can find me here. All right. I, and occasionally you can find me somewhere on the Twitters. 
under the Johnny Mulligans. And that's about... Yeah, and I'll hang, I hang out over at Lexicon. MTG Lexicon. They do EDH play. I just won't have much time to do that for the next 30 days or so-ish. I'll get back to it. It's fine. Perfect. Well, you can find me under the Silver Lake, and you can also find me right here on this very channel. Please subscribe to the channel. Please thumbs up the video. Please listen to us on iTunes and Spotify and all those things, because I will be uploading it uh, whenever my lazy, you know, Sam <laughs> unmotivated ass uh, decides to upload this. Don't don't push me too hard. Uh, <laughs> but you could also, yeah, share it around on the Twitters. Tell everyone that we're talking about cult films. I wish this was considered a cult film because I don't think anyone saw it or liked it necessarily. It's like 50-50 across the board on, on Rotten Tomatoes with the critic score and the audience score. So it's just like this is one of the most polarizing films we've ever talked to or talked about. And I'm glad that this was one of the most polarizing reviews that we've ever done. This was a lot of fun. You can follow me at John the Host. You could also follow this very podcast at The Cult of Films. Until next time, Johnny was the dog killer in the apartment with the wrench the whole time. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>